exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. <laughs> And and so like producing you you uh you produce heat for heat for your ass Sally Sale? Yeah, yeah, that well, we can't possibly produce that. It's just belling through my hood, Sally Sale. Um uh belling through my hood, and I think it's one more, another one we did. I think we did like three on that Sally Sale album. And mm. in the process. Did this open up the doors for all the other artists? Cause you made some of my uh, favorite SIBO joints too. Yeah. So, so the time we was going through it with forty and uh, me trying to get paid, that's when I produced SIBO. So. You no, know, I I don't know why the fuck I knew that. I just knew that it was something because there was like a gap. I think where yeah. I didn't hear no music with you and him, but all of a sudden there was all this Mike Mosley SIBO music. Yeah, yeah, that was because of uh, uh, forty him cousin T. He had um, he had saw that you know he and forty them was kind of like you know we was having a little issues or whatever with our with our business getting our business together. So we had kind of fell out. So he had seen it, saw he knew how dope you know how 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 dope I was and how dope I had but I had sand with him too, you know. So he was like, oh, no, I'm gonna, I want to do something with them. It was a, some small chumps and we produce, you know, start producing Steve-O, you know? So at the time you fell out with 40 and you didn't do no more music when he put money, the only money you had got was that 25000 So, So the 25000 so what happened was, was, was the fallout was really only like a couple months. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? It wasn't I was like, you know what I mean? So the twenty five thousand came. Oh, I was doing sales, I was doing CBO, I was doing the low. You know what I mean? We was doing, we was doing all of these different. We was doing 98, 94 mobs with uh, Jay John on them, Sin. You know, we was doing all of that stuff like simultaneously. So we was like on some, we was on some. Uh, you know, the producers now like DJ Mustard and all them doing. That's what we was doing in the nineties, eighties, nineties. We just was flooding the market, not knowing that we were creating more traction for ourselves by but in the market, but what we did know is we wasn't really tripping off of getting too paid too much money up front off of the tracks as much as we were about the people that were spending the money doing the music. They were actually technically promoting us to get us to that next bigger check. So that's how we looked at it. We, we didn't look at it like, you know what I mean? We need 5,000 a track. We didn't look at it like that, that back then. We were just looking at more promotions to get us to that bigger payday. Big paycheck coming to something. If you if, if you a yeah. pop head and you fuck with this music shit, if you listen to Gas Chamber, it sound like Forty is gonna come on rapping. Like when I first heard it, it sound like some Forty shit. Like honestly, yeah. Why is yeah, that? It's because. Um, <laughs> because I was producing for 42. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just because we were, we weren't we weren't doing okay, Sibo, we're gonna give you a sound. No, we wasn't we wasn't thinking like this. This is your sound 40 or this is your sound. We were just doing the same music we had been doing prior to doing 40 stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And we were still doing it. I still was at the studio with 40 Man. Like Studio Tone mixed that album. And so I'm constantly, me and Studio Tone had a studio together. So 40 and B did we all would come to one studio in Vallejo. Uh, I would have I had a little back small room. Studio Tone had a room on the side, but it was all just one building. So I'm constantly hearing Studio Tone making music. You know what I mean? I'm constantly asking Studio Tone what to do, how to do it. You know what I mean? So I'm being influenced by Studio Tone's sound. You know what I mean as well. So that's that's probably why. You know what I mean? You hear some of my elements through your tone. Some of our elements kind of got the same similarity because through your tone kind of like, you know what I mean? Put a little bit at it, that in me, you know, consciously. I, I always consider, and I know he wasn't with y'all, um, just directly with y'all, but when you think of my music, I think about Mike Mosley, Sam Bostick, 
um, Studio Tone, Tone Capone, um, Ant Banks, um, and I'm, I'm missing somebody else that I was just thinking about. But it was, it was uh, even, I even thought, to be honest with you, I thought Mike Dean was in the studio with y'all all the time. It was just, it seemed like they, like y'all all was cooking up at the same time. And it was just, it, it, it was like a common sound. I felt like those was all your peers in producing. Am I a little bit on point with that? Uh, I mean, we all, I mean, just like, just like, I'm gonna give you an example. Like when the, when the New Jack Swing stuff came out, you had other people doing New Jack Swing stuff. You had right. F doing New, New Jack Swing. You had, you know what I mean? You had uh, 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 Teddy doing, you know, you had all these other, you had Babyface and even doing it. So we all, it was of that time and era, we all had similarities because we probably had the same equipment, you know what I mean? <laughs> the same sound module. Right, right, right. right. How, how was that? Fb twelves at that time? What was that? I, uh, I was I had Fb twelve, but I was on NPC. I was on NPC. Yeah, NPC had you fucking slapping. <laughs> God damn! That was NPC on the Bumble with Fody. NPC, yeah. Hey, the Bumble. I don't give a fuck. In this lifetime, somebody <laughs> has to do the Bumble over, like. They, they got, ain't gonna be able to. Man, yeah. listen, that shit right there is it's like a one of a kind song, man. That shit is I did. that shit is sick, man. How y'all even come with that concept for that? Bodhi come let me, with the, mm, the, Let me tell you what that is. <laughs> Mumble nothing but uh uh one of Ann Banks' songs, 187 proof flips. That's what I thought. That song. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. We just redid that. But you took some so drums did, out. We we did it our way. Did you take some drums out? It wasn't verbatim. Nah, it was it wasn't verbatim. It just was the just the just the the, the, the piano and the drums. But you said y'all flipped it. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's fucking nuts, man. Now that's, that's, some, fucking, that's some fucking history for your ass right there. Yeah. Hey, I gotta ask you this too. Uh, how far was it into your relationship with 40? Of course, y'all had the little misunderstanding and you was producing for other people. How far into that did you produce for the people coming out of the crest side? Like the Mac Malls and uh Mac Dre. Yeah, um, so like I was saying, I, I, I lived everywhere in the Southern days, especially, right? So I actually lived in the press at one okay. point. Okay. Um, right there where it was at. So, and I had, a, and I was having money. So they was, Mac Dre would actually see me moving around in the bins. You know what I mean? Um, so I, you know, I'm, and I'm, and I'm a politician. So I'm, I'm cool with everybody. I'm not, oh, I ain't on no beef hype. I wasn't on none of that. I was just me moving around. Taking a hand, we can agree with everybody. Um, so I think after we did the 40 stuff, you know, Mac Maul was coming off into his second album. And so that's how, you know, I got to doing the Untouchable album with Mac Maul. Mm -hmm. uh, it's progression of, you know, you being the hottest producer in the town, and you know what I mean? One of the hottest production companies going. So everybody wants to get that them to where they need to get to, you know? So that's what it was. Of course, they did that, did that have an effect on you and our relationship? No, nah, not, not at all. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, did 40 care? He didn't care about it or nothing? Nah. It, it, wasn't, it, it really wasn't even that deep. The, the beat wasn't really as deep as it has seemed. You know what I mean? Well, nobody, they wasn't tripping like that at all because 40 of them was getting money over there. You know what I mean? They was getting money in the pool, but 40 of them wasn't, they wasn't tripping like that. You know what I mean? At all. But you, <laughs> but you said you it was, was the media. Yeah, it was just the street talk. It was just more, you know, one or two dudes might, on the outside of the, of the, of the crew, might have got into it with somebody, and so now it's a beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's us, us y'all type thing. Or 
we think we better than y'all. Y'all ain't better than us, you know? So it became a musical com competition too at some point, you know what I mean? We were really, we were transitioning from out of being out of the streets into the music more so, you know what I mean? So, so we all started to get smart enough, you know what I mean? Thankfully, we didn't let it get to the point of, you know what I mean? Killing people like that, you know? Right, right. right. So that you know, in the nineties, we all had pep rocks. And, and <laughs> you, never, you yeah. never got a, you never had to choose a side. You just kept yours all the way neutral. You yeah, know, I was all, you, you didn't have to be. Yeah. Either way. Yeah, because I was talking too much. I just stayed to myself, stayed out the way. Yeah. Did you um? Did you um? And 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 why are we talking about Mac Mall and the Crest? Another, I mean, Bay Area fucking super song, fucking uh, staple, Get Right. I mean, y'all inserted Get Right into the everyday language. You know what I mean? People would always say you need to get right, but get you some Get Right was like, you know, when y'all when that dropped, that shit was like that was the new wave. Mac Mall was the new hot young nigga. That was the wave, like. Did they, did, cause you know, I feel like in, you get like, re, you get, you get, you get your energy in waves, right? So like, you could have been doing your thing before you're doing your thing with Bo, then hitting this young nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, with this game that he's spitting on these tracks and it just sounds refreshing. How was that? So, so what happened with, with that, I, I think I ended up getting hooked up with Mac Maul and, uh, you know, cause I was just a fan of, of Kyrie. Kyrie was on another mob he's probably, person you're probably thinking about. So That's Kyrie did Kyrie, yeah. Mac, Kyrie and Ferg, he was a dude named Ferg. Ferg and Kyrie, uh, they did Mac Maul's first album. That album was so dope to me. I love Sick With This. I love yeah. that album, right? Yeah. That song was so dope. And the way Kyrie produced it, it was like, if you listen to it, it was more like a, a movie because each song, it faded it out and it kind of faded into the next song. You know what I mean? It was like a transition. I love that. You know what I mean? It was like that's how I kind of yeah. When that, if you think about it, all uh, you there? Yeah, we there. Uh, Dr. Dre album did that. So, you know what I mean? The the chronic does that. And I always bring up YG My Crazy Life. I think as of recent was like the most. Close to that, how you fade out into a skit, you come right back into a song. Yeah, and, and if you check it out, I did that same thing with TQ album. I did the same top five and four with the TQ album. You know what I mean? Right. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna wait on TQ before we even get to that because I didn't even realize he was your fucking artist. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just thought I was hearing TQ. I was thinking of Bay Area TQ. I didn't even think of the LA TQ. Right. right, right. When you was, so when you was working with Mac Maul, right? Bay Area TQ. I didn't know one. I was just like, I was just like TQ. It's a Bay Area TQ. I just didn't know. Right. <laughs> At all. Hey, when you was working with Mac, I was just like TQ. I never heard of one though. When you was working with Mac Maul, right? And I know yeah. Mac Maul fucked with Pop. Is that how you met yeah. Pop? Actually, not. No, you I met, met Pocket Pop. Jack the Rapper, right? I met Pocket Jack the Rapper, but I, I had met Pop's manager, which was Layla. You know what I mean? So I met Layla. And so Layla. Is that Layla Steinberg? Layla Steinberg, yeah. She was Maul's uh, uh, manager at the time. So it just came, all came full circle. You know what I mean? So I ended up meeting Pocket at Jack the Rapper because of all of the stuff that we was producing. Because we were producing. That Selly Sales and that Seatos, Pac was a fan. He loved it, that stuff. He loved music, you know what I mean? So he loved all of that stuff that I was doing, you know, out there with, um, just with everybody, you know? So I met him and Jack the Rapper. You know, a friend of mine introduced me to him. And uh, if 40 them was out there with us too. So I actually met Pac just on a fluke. We met up at the escalator. <laughs> we just both started talking, you know? He's like, man, I want to work with you. I'm like, I want to work with you. I said, Pac said, I want to work with you. I know I'm gonna get a plaque doing something with you. Hell yeah. Like, man, you know? Hell yeah. So, um, and all of them. Now, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, 
Is this urban myth? Did you meet Tupac and Left Eye at the same time? The same, I met them, not at the same time, I met them uh, at the same event. At the same event? Uh, yeah, I met them at the same event. So earlier in the day, I met Pac. A couple hours later, I met Left Eye. The crazy thing about that is I got some footage of Left Eye when I met her. I had her do a shot. I got. I don't know where to put it. I had some footage of it. Wow. That's amazing right so there. So what what was it like? What was it like when you started? And I met who? Well, let me let me tell you let me tell you this, right? Let me tell you who all I met that that that, that, that Jack the rapper. I yeah, met right. Puffy. Huh? Run that down to us. You said you read, met so Rangstar and who? I met Puffy at a at a party. And Puffy handed me some flyers. Puffy was out there passing out flyers. I met Puffy there. I met uh, Buster Rhymes there. Because um, Buster Rhymes was Buster Rhymes was the only person. Like we was at the concert, and I think that I think Forty Nine was performing at at, the, at uh, Jack the Rapper or something. And Buster Rhymes was going so hard. You know, back then East Coast they wasn't checking for us at all. They thought everybody on the West Coast had Jerry for them. Yeah. So they was like. They hated on us. They like really didn't they were fooling with us at all. But Buster Rhymes, he always rocked with us. Buster Rhymes was going, he was a he was he was at the concert. He he loved E40s back then. You know what I mean? So I met him and I met yeah, and I met uh, yeah, so I met Puffy, he gave me some flyers to come to a little day party. That's when he first saw Puffy was passing out the flyers himself? He was passing out himself. Puffy was a promoter. <laughs> what Puffy was this? Uh, yeah, what what he was there. Was there. What? He had already done some music by then, right? Did he have did he have Craig Mack in? Yeah, this was this was Craig Mack, because that's who was performing. He had Craig Mack, he had Total, and he had and he had, Biggie was like on the slate. I don't think Biggie had, had, was at that was gonna perform at that, but I know Total and uh I wanna say one twelve and I wanna say Craig Mack for sure performed at that thing. But Puffy was having a party, so he Pass, pass no flyers. He's handing me a flyer. Damn. It's weird how it's the way it He handed you a flyer at that time. Man, that's crazy. He's putting in his own oh, work. Yeah, crazy. let me tell you who else. Met this dude named Kevin Black. So, so Kevin Black, come to find out, he is he was the person for Death Row. So I didn't meet Snoop then, but I met Kevin Black, which was the head of marketing promotions there. And so back then, you know, I wasn't having money like that. So them passes used to be a lot of money. I'm like, man, I'm not spending no hundred dollar, two hundred dollars for no pass. So I would take, I would get one pass, and I would make me some passes, and I would just get the lanyard and make them right. And so I'm, I'm we doing the pass back with the passes, right? So Kevin Black, the head of marketing promotions for Death Row, he ended up, I ended up meeting with him. Um, he gave me. Uh, 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 past, <laughs> and I ended up making making one, so that allowed us to get into some parties and some functions or whatever. But that was the time at that time, Snoop and Luke and them were having a beef, and so you would see Snoop and walk through deep, you know what I mean, like he was a boxer, and then you would see Luke and them. It was like some little weird beef going on with Luke and Snoop. And them. Back yeah. I remember that. That, that might have been that might have been around Dre Day time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Dan, we need more Jack the Rappers and Hip Hop on the Green and the Gavins. We need more of them again. We need all that, that back, man. I think, I think all that. we need more face to face, man. We need less of this internet shit. The internet allow us to get away with being weird human beings, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't have all that weird energy showing up with all them grown men like that. No. You was gonna stick out like a sore thumb. You know? How did that fall off, Jack the Rapper and stuff? How did that start falling off by the wayside? I think it's just because because. Uh, it's become it, it became some point. Oh all yeah, the regular it turned into some other shit. Getting, turned into not what it was. You know, it don't it don't become exactly. uh, music industry people it becomes a bunch it's of fans and stuff. Stuff. Uh, fashion show. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
in the summer. Yeah. But the closest thing we had is revolt. You know what I mean? Revolt just trying was trying to do it now. Revolt conference. Yeah, respect. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out, Puff. So you also um now now what was your first session like with Pop? Was that the was that the heavy in the game session? Not uh heavy in the game. Me and Sam had actually produced heavy in the game before before I even got to him, before I got to Pop. We had, so basically when I met him at Jack the Rapper, he was like, Oh, I got, you know, I'm working on me against the world album. He didn't he didn't know the name of the album, but he was like, I'm working on my album. I got, you know, uh, I'm got a couple songs I need to do, you know, come to LA and let's go. You know, so we exchanged numbers and I got it back and I called him. And he was like, okay, can you come down? I'm gonna be in the Bay Area. And he beat the Spice One over in uh, Newark. So I went over there and gave him, so me and Sam knew he was coming to town. So me and Sam sat there and we made Heavy in the Game in Fairfield at the studio, you know, in the studio. So I had already had a tape of him. I took him Heavy in the Game and dropped it off to him. And then he flew back to Burbank. And then the next day he called me, told me to come down. He wanted to record Heavy in the Game. And that's when I met Richie Rich. Mm. Um, I met Richie Rich from Pop. Now, it's um, like, because it's crazy because how many beats did you take? Well, he heard Heavy in the Game, wanted it on the spot. But did you take more beats? Because you know now a producer would come with 100 beats. You know what I'm saying? It's like y'all cooked up Heavy in the Game. Like, y'all so confident. Like, y'all know he going to pick this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, we, but we, we never was the, we never was the, uh, the cook up a hundred beat type producers. We we wasn't that. We was we was you know come from the ground up like Forty would tell us, man, come from the ground up. So we doing it on the spot because I think that it's a different vibe and it's a different feel. A lot of times when you have the the artist right there with you, you know what I mean. It's a different input put into the music versus blindly making some random stuff and then just hoping that you know, hoping that they can yeah that level. You know that came later on down the line. Cooking up a bunch of, you know, just a random. 